Jonathan here, and uh, I've been talking uh, for a long time about building a Mac uh, for video work uh, as opposed to paying thousands of dollars for a Mac. And uh, when you build a Mac, it's basically called a Hackintosh, where you take a PC and you, or you take PC parts and you build a PC, but you hack it so that it runs Mac instead. And uh, it's a little more complicated than just uh, building a PC and, and installing Windows, but still totally doable if you, if you know what you're doing and you do your research and uh, Google is your friend. So um, this, is the, this is the Hackintosh right here that I've built. Cost about 800 bucks in parts, uh, motherboard case, uh, processor were the most expensive. Uh, the rest I had lying around or I was able to get uh, pretty cheaply. So um, it's, right now it's to save space. It's sitting on top of my PC, um, which runs Windows 7 over here that I use for gaming and, and office applications and, and uh, you know TV and, and all that. And this is uh, uh, my MacBook that I was using to uh, edit video on before, and it's good. It's a good computer, but it's not cut out for heavy duty video editing, so that's why I built this thing. So let's let's power it on real quick and I'll, I'll show you it booting up. So just takes a few seconds. That's the motherboard BIOS booting up. Now, of course, a normal Mac does not use BIOS. Um, so, of course, it's, it's going to take a, a little bit longer for it to boot. But anyway, here it is, Hackintosh. And uh, it, it doesn't really take all that long for... Uh, once the uh, uh, once the Mac partition is loaded, it doesn't really take all that long to boot. A uh, little less than a minute. So, yeah, Hackintosh. And of course, I have this processor overclocked a little bit. Uh, I wanted to get an i7, but it just wasn't in the budget. Uh, eventually, I will uh, I will upgrade and uh, put another four gigs of RAM in there. Um, but I really just needed something to get something off the ground uh, and uh, get some real horsepower going for video editing. So uh, over here is. My main hard drive is 160 gigabyte SATA hard drive, and then over here uh, is my scratch drive. It's called Cutting Room. It's actually two 80 gigabyte 7200 RPM hard drives rated together to make 160 gigabytes. Yeah, I know that's risky, but. Um, you know, I needed the space and they were cheap drives that were laying around and I don't plan to be working on projects for very long before they go into our archive on another, uh, on another drive. And, <laughs> but ironically enough, the, 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 archive, the archive drive is actually three laptop hard drives rated together to make a little over a terabyte. So, um, but the least thing that I'm worried about are hard drives because I don't leave this thing on constantly. I only have it on when I do video editing work and all that. So it's a pretty cool system. I decided to go with green LEDs instead of blue because green LEDs are easier on your eyes. Uh, it's got four Thunderblade fans going in there. Two on the top, one in the back and one up front here to cool the hard drives uh, and a uh, pretty good CPU cooler uh, the video card in there 
is an ATI Radeon 4850 uh, with a gig of video memory. Um, an Apple compatible video card, like a, a video card that you could only put in a Mac Pro, of that performance rating would cost about $400. Um, so, brand new, this video card uh, would cost about $160. I got this one on Craigslist for $50, and it's, it's a beast, it's huge, and it's uh, very powerful, so I'm really happy with that. Um, but yeah, if you put this video card into a Mac Pro, it would not work. So Apple has has a propensity, has a tendency to cripple um, their Mac so that they can't work with regular video cards or any PC hardware at all. In fact, uh, I think the only real thing that you can put in a Mac Pro generically that would work uh, is a hard drive. Maybe a PCI card, maybe. So that, that, that limits your options. When you have a Mac Pro, you're going to be saddled with the um, requirement to buy expensive um, proprietary parts. So great operating system, not a great business model for poorer people, but luckily there are geniuses like me out there. No, I, I'm not a genius. I just followed the instructions. I just Googled stuff and read tons and tons and tons of forums and uh, instruction manuals online, and that's, that's all it is. It's, um, I'm not trying to make myself out to be a genius. If you have the time and the desire and, and, and the need to do this, you know, and you know a little bit about computers and, and, and all that, then, then you can do this. It's, it's not as complicated as it may seem. Although with my luck, I have to try things at least six times to get it right. Like I had to install the operating system six times to get it right. Because if you, if you screw it up, then you know, you have to start all over again. So, um, with the installation, not with the build, but anyway, I think I got myself a pretty good system here for video edit, video editing, and it's going to last me a long time. Um, only thing about it is, um, the only bug that I have yet to work out completely is, um, a lot of motherboards, the built-in ethernet port does not work reliably like you'll boot it up and then it'll work and then you'll boot it up again and it won't work that's at least that's my experience like every other time you boot it up ethernet just won't work so i'd order a a, a, a pci uh ethernet card it's like a ten dollar part it's no big deal um other than that uh it's uh it's a great system so uh thanks for your time uh see ya